phones. So let's look at the level at which they are hyperlink sources, they prefer pictures and sound, they like user-generated content, and you, digital immigrant, you prefer to release info from limited sources, you want to be on single focus task at once, you prefer to get your information from text. <laughs> In fact, the best way to describe it is that you have to write it before you type it. They think why typing it. I was going to tell you about the seven-year-old baby who I was looking at, and she could search her own video, sorry, his own video on YouTube. They opened YouTube, just went, uh, father's uh, uh, tab. I was just looking at the poor. What went there? He went to YouTube, and he was clicking until he got to Ben 10, got to his own kind of, he was, he selected his own videos. So I was looking at, uh, The father said, Oh, was uh, said, No, since I started that thing about four or five months, and he would start feeling like he's playing, he would get the app out. I know people have seen these babies, that is the new thing. And you don't even know, you don't even have a YouTube account, you don't have a Gmail, you don't have a Gmail account, you don't have an email address. <laughs> you are here, listen, you have an Instagram account. Let me see your right hand up, Instagram account. <laughs> you don't have an email account. Let me see your hand up. You don't have Gmail. Oh, everybody has an email account. Please clap for yourself, clap for yourselves. <laughs> I like that. I was, I was in a school in Oshun State. I was in a school in Oshun State to speak to the teachers. And out of 27 teachers, large school, only about five had email accounts. And they have to, the mentality, the mentality is that they are going to a post office. To, you know the way they say, hey, sir, a friend of mine has to give me data to download. <laughs> Let's go on. Let's go on. Remember, remember what I said last year? For you to succeed with your students, you have to change strategy. You know you have to become the learner now and they the teacher. You have to, one, observe. Tell anybody observe. observe. Then redesign how you will teach them now then observe again, then calibrate, then begin to influence performance. The truth is, a lot of us teachers are not willing to do the good work of listening and watching our students. What are the behaviors of your students? Do you know their social media handles? Do you know what they are saying on Twitter? Do you know their behavior? Do you know if a student says to you, um, they are talking to each other and they say, I was talking to a teenager a few days ago and she said to her friend standing beside her, I said, um, Tolani, let's ditch this place. I said, come. I mean, what I used to know is let's leave this place. Which one is let's ditch this place? And then they gave me, you won't believe it, I thought I was aware. They gave me a litany of words that had other meanings. He said, ditch this place means that you don't need to say bye-bye to me. I don't say bye-bye to you. Let's just fizzle out like evaporate and we have a place we're going to recondense. <laughs> and, and, and when somebody says, let's ditch this place, I felt it was insulting because a lot of us were standing and, and she just told her friend, said, Tarani, Let's ditch this place. He said, come. You, mean you are going to ditch all of us. You? <laughs> you have language. You have language that you have no clue what's going on. Therefore, you need to change strategy and watch them. Let's go on. Uh, you must do continuous learning. I will not spend time on this because my time is fast spent. Yes, I hope everybody can see this. Anyway, the slides will be made available so you can look at it later. Digital education has its legs. And when we talk about digital education, I hear things like, let's set up a server in our school. Let's open a Facebook account for the school. Um, let's employ a security expert. Let's install cameras. What's going on is much more serious than that. Someone was telling me and said there are students now who know at 15 how to hack every known security network. They can send codes to your cameras, and your cameras will be showing you what you want to see, which is that they are sleeping. And there are very, when you tell school proprietors and teachers, say, you need to invest in technology, they think buy server. That's the total. You go and buy a server. And they say, you know, our budget this term, 
it, it cannot accommodate the server. I'm looking at them like, who is talking about server? I'm talking about plain observation on Facebook. You must have an account that is able to trend. I mean, your pictures on Instagram does not have life. They won't go to your page. You go and take your church picture after Sunday service. Wear dress like that. Then you are standing. They do, psh, 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 with a Bible. <laughs> or the Quran. They won't go to your page. You must take selfie. You must stand a certain way. You must evoke, thank you. You must do that. Or, you know, this... Uh, everybody has a leg. I don't know what that is about. Or you do that. Or you do... <laughs> If you don't do that, the, you need to evoke this response I'm hearing from you. You, you need them to say, ah, see, 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 see Mrs. Jokel. <laughs> they need to say that because what's going on is that if you don't bring their attention to yourself, the system will colonize them. They will listen to Davido. By the way, Davido, I don't know how to classify this, but there are some people who are educationists. I'm going to get to solutions in a bit they need to bring into the room and use them by force. How can you have picnic international competition and you give the person a big, big, big billboard written on it 100,000 for winning international spelling bee? And somebody is singing, spreading gun violence and Igbo and Tramador and he's giving his wife 45 million for just being a <laughs> girlfriend. Ah, you guys are aware. Ah, Lagos teachers are woken up. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, so you know that accolades don't mean medals anymore. And assurance is not blessed. Assurance, Jesus is mine. I mean, when you use the word assurance on the street, you mean, say to me, I said to you, <laughs> let's go to digital spectrum again. For digital education, I encourage every teacher to look at this list. And you must develop a game plan across digital identity. You must turn the energy. You see, in systems engineering, you don't work against a massive body of water. You go with the flow. Any engineer or scientist or physics, you know, a lot of physics, law of motion and energy, when you want to dam an ocean, you don't go against where the predominant current is going. You follow the energy. If students are acting a certain way, oh, there are things to stop, but there are a lot of other things to enter the energy and turn it in the direction in which it's going. We must forcefully enter into their minds and institute points of learning across their lifestyle. You cannot come from outside and tell them what to do. This is the approach of teaching. That I am the hero and the teacher and you and the student. No. You remember you don't understand even the language of what's going on. That's not because you're not intelligent or not, you're not first class. You're just in another realm and regime. For example, if you understand Yoruba now, if you get to Igbo land, you'll be lost. You are just a digital immigrant. You are born at a particular time when the sun was turning and they were born much more later. It doesn't mean you are wrong or they are right. You are just in two different divides. It's a game of perception. And so you must seek to understand, seek to understand what's going on in their lives before you seek to impart your knowledge. Digital identity talks about branding. Oh, please, can you bring this up? You must become a digital citizen, a digital co-creator and digital entrepreneur. If you do this, it's going to help you to make, even make money. A digital citizen is someone that has presence on the footprint. If I Google your name now as a teacher, do I see mathematics lectures? How many online videos do you have delivered in a very fun and interactive way? Pick a camera. Your most inspiring lectures with a group of students, put them on video and register that online. Remember your students will Google and they are checking other things. And this is not the time to come and just pick one long cane and do the lecture in a very boring way. You must be creative, and so you become a digital citizen like them. When they see you lecture with the two, when they see you with a one-minute video explaining a concept under one minute in a very neat and tight way, and you have the benefit of going to see and say, cut, I didn't say that right. Do it again. 
By the time you do that, remember one of the problems of, of education before now is that anyway, you could not record many things, so you, you had a problem with recall. Imagine they could play your video over and over, and over and over, and over and over. Think about what that would do to their psyche. Think about the brand presence. Think about how many millions of people can see you. Think about how you can sell your next master's book. Think about how a proprietor in another school can actually see that your video and then call you for an interview. Think about how students fail a certain subject, for example, economics, and you do one mini videos across the entire um, semester, across the entire term, and somebody sees what you did in economics, and they say, get us that teacher to be a part-time China school. Think about becoming a data citizen entrepreneur, and you Use it forcefully. Make sure you don't go and dress like village fishermen meeting. <laughs> Use the right colors, music, ambience. Use edutainment to create curiosity. Ah, my, I, I, was, I was in a particular lecture in um, um, Johannesburg, and they were doing Macbeth. And then the teacher did something different. What the teacher did was that they made everybody stand on a big corridor, tall, big corridor. And Macbeth and his team were coming, and the students were standing on the railings, and people were looking at the internet and taking pictures and reading stories and identifying Macbeth. That is Banquo. Oh, that is his wife. Those are the three witches. Do you think they will forget? They were using both the internet and what they were reading, and the lecture notes to identify the characters as they were moving. They were trying to use both 3D. At a point, the teacher was saying, telling them that I was going to get, and get 3D goggles and try to look for a movie that was in the so that they can watch Macbeth, so that they would be in the movie. You think they'll be able to check Shaku Shaku? You must forcefully capture their minds. He that has been given brief of the next generation cannot afford to look at the level of blood. We're already losing them anyway. A lot of them are restless in class. So we have to do something differently. I can go on and on across that spectrum, data security, um, emotional intelligence on data platform, things like bullying. Everybody who demonstrates bullying physically, we do it on social media. You will know who the champions in class are. You will see the tendencies and don't, you know, parents do it and teachers. So, I saw the picture you posted on social media. Will you remove it? You are a Christian child. That's not the first thing, no. You don't even understand what's going on. What if they move to Tumblr? What if they leave Facebook for you? They are, and they are going to Tumblr. Are you going to go to Snapchat too? It's better to let them do the thing and understand what's going on. You will know people's girlfriends if you're on Instagram. If you watch their WhatsApp status, you will know the babe that's sucking them and the guy that's sucking them. The truth is, a lot of us are even too busy preparing lesson note. Lesson one. <laughs> lesson two. Lesson three. And they are tweeting and say, uh, and your nickname you will find out on Twitter. <laughs> say, Bengal is coming. <laughs> Opako is here. <laughs> See your friend, Pelebe. <laughs> Tacha de Como. By the time you see the tweet, you're not following them. They don't even know who you are. So you are in another world. Say, stop, drop this your phone, Jare. You are not even listening to anything. Oh my God, I have 10 minutes. Across each of that spectrum, teachers must develop a painstaking curriculum to influence culture and behavior. If you don't do it, we are joking. Look, look, it cannot be social media and the internet or digital realm and then we are, they are not, no longer two different places. Imagine a classroom. You are teaching, for example, biology, and you show them movies of the internal organs, show them the art, and then you are able to give them that CD to take home, and they read when they get home, they look at the CD repeatedly. There are many things teachers say that you are struggling to write. Imagine you tell them to relax. This is being recorded. Don't write. Just watch me. Imagine you free their senses of just watching because that's what they want to do. Imagine you bring them into participatory lectures and bring what you call 3D animation objects. And this goes to funding. I'm going to go to that point as I round, as I round up in a few minutes. The truth is that we have to apply creativity. Can my slide come up very quickly? I know this one is misbehaving. Everybody say, blood of Jesus. We need to pray for some of these things at times. Okay. Yes. Practical steps to educate digital child because I don't want to waste time. Think digital. See that spectrum? I can spend many, many, many hours on it. Every teacher must sit down with that spectrum and look at what needs to be done in each area because it covers the human life. 
Number one, think digital in the mind, not in tools, techniques, and methodologies. Become digital in orientation. Are we together? It's different from, the, I mean, how do I know you're not digital? When I say, uh, uh, how do you use digital? They say, oh, we have two servers, one from Dell and the other one from HP. I know you don't know what you're talking about. They say, our school is fully IT enabled. It's a computer laboratory, and we teach programming. Oh, look at Dell. They don't know what's going on. But if I come to school and say, do you use digital? And say, yes, sir. we actually have 80% uh, of our lectures in already in multimedia format, and they can listen to it. And then we have this. And when you show me, I will know you are thinking digital. Digital is a mindset and a behavioral pattern, not a set of tools or gadgets. Okay. Implant and embed data into the learning process and student lifestyle. Lecture notes and exercises. Do exercises on Instagram and on Facebook. Start a lecture in class and do part B. On, they will be on Facebook in the evening anyway. They want to talk to their friends. Then complete the lecture on Facebook. Do a small video and then tell them to come and tell you what they read in the video. Make sure that's a seamless continuation. Insert the distraction into the learning process. Distract the distraction. Yoruba people will call it Permit me, I will say, I will try to interpret. Babi mag babek, babek mag babi. I mean, if a child, if a bird has learned how to fly without perching, the hunter too has, have to, has to learn how to shoot without missing. Since they are now on all the social media tools, we will have to go there too. And we are not going to take it easy. You will go like, I mean, if you are an immigrant, you know you have to learn the culture. You know you have to go to evening school. No, you have to, I mean, you're, you're getting to France for the first time. You, you don't know Je, Je Pas France. You don't know anything. What do you do? You go to class. Every time you are on it, you make sure until, my mother will say, Karamon. <laughs> you need to use creativity and experience for learning, and that creativity and experience is more important than grades and exams. Then grades and exams are just to rate where people are for diagnostic reasons. The learning experience itself is far more important than what they become. All right, please go on. You must ensure balance and vigilance. Oh, balance means there is a total number of hours that psychiatrists and psychologists have said that if children are exposed to a certain number of hours in front of the screen, there are sleep disorders that happen, some of them eating disorders, some of them develop funny habits. So there must be balance and vigilance. And vigilance is not installing camera or looking at somebody up and down. Vigilance is understanding behavior. Vigilance is watching out about their attitudes. If somebody will experiment with drugs, their social media handles will show it. Did you hear that? If a young girl or boy has a self-esteem problem, he will tweet something. He will always tweet something. The guys who have committed suicide recently, we go check their tweets, their Instagram, and, and all of us were like, how did we miss the clue? How didn't we know? They will all, especially with children, the person always say that uh, my future is in the hands of God. Uh, they are not greeting me. Uh, the person will be throwing some shades. You will see it. And the person will be nice in class, very gentle. And then they go slit their wrists. Because we are not watching. We need to invest. Okay, teacher training must embed digital training. And we must seek digital natives. People, schools, proprietors, government must employ people who are in the digital world. At times, teenagers, to help you think through your digital strategy in your school. Don't do it alone. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> engage, on engage on social media and make a clan, community. E.g. algebra clan. E.g. trigonometry clan. E.g. literature clan. E.g. Macbeth clan. Create stories. I, I don't have time to explain to you how you can build. You can turn your lecture into a storyline. You can turn character. You can show that mathematics is actually a story of a man that started. Angle of elevation is how the plane fell. You can find human stories. Humanize the learning and put on data platform. Create content in a way that they, they, they will tell each other. Have you seen what he wrote? Have you seen what she wrote? And you know what? Gradually you can even sell this for yourself and make a lot of money. Invest in data psychologists, addiction scientists, and curriculum experts. I will not, this is a trade secret that psychologists don't like people to talk about. Actually, commercial psychologists. Let me tell you secrets. There are people who are investing billions of US dollars, billions of US dollars, into making their product addictive. Apple, Google, Facebook, Instagram, and they are succeeding. They are people who are called addiction psychologists and scientists, the science. And you must go and learn as a teacher how to make your lecture 
your lectures addictive. You must read up on addiction psychology. What happens to people that get addicted? How do people get addicted? How do you create learning experiences that make people addicted to math, English, biology, um, literature? People must become addicted by force. Addiction does not give people room to negotiate. Addiction is a science. If you know how it works, you can drive it. And there are people who specialize in doing it. Educationists must employ people and pay money to addiction scientists. Otherwise, we will lose our children to all forms of vices. Funding, funding, funding. To shift culture requires a lot of money. I spoke to my friend, an entrepreneur, who does business in the educational sector. And I said, blah, 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 blah. He said, come, schools don't pay. Don't bother. Proprietor will say they have a budget. Teacher will say they don't earn enough. We need deliberately as teachers and, as, and don't, don't leave funding to your proprietor alone, I'm begging you. Don't make, oh, the proprietor and the school, we always give me money that I need. Let me tell you, the kind of conversations we have with your boss are different. Can you imagine a teacher using your energy to write to NGOs that fund education globally and bring the attention of your school, bring that funding NGO to your school? What's going to happen is that your proprietor will like you. And madam, I got an NGO, and this is what they, they fund actually have about um, 10,000 US dollars. What is it? Thank you. People, these are curriculum members that are giving me information. They said there are schools abroad that are looking for schools in the African environment to spend money on. Adopt, adopt them and help them. When you show a foreign investor how you want to change culture, I've not seen any school use what you call positive stars. Pay them money to come and talk to students about why they need to sit down. Um, Two-Face Edibia was in a school in Agege many years ago. The principal of the school told us later that the performance in the school increased after Two-Face spoke to them. He came to talk about who education help. Can you see the title? <laughs> who education help. You, you and I, in our widest, you won't, you won't put your title like that. Though. You are going to put the general strategy of education, the benefit of education, education for all. They have switched off on you. Say, uh, yes, so, he can say, yes, so, yes, so, who education ahead? And he was using his personal story to explain to them why they needed to study and read hard. And the principal said people began to read. There's something called edutainment. We need to be creative. We need to change the narrative. And shifting culture is difficult. Remember, structure, strategy. We always be eating for lunch by culture. Culture, sorry, structure, strategy, systems, ideas, ideals, motivation. Culture will just chop it up. You cannot take from people how they are. How they are will always affect anything you place before them. And so if you want to shift culture, it's a deliberate thinking. A school must create an isolated culture from the society. Teachers and proprietors, all this idea of my boss will not listen to me, I will not listen to my boss, that dichotomy has to end. That's why you need the emotional intelligent teacher. So you must be a change leader. You cannot afford to say the proprietor will not listen to me because your scores are going to be going down. You must listen to each other. I didn't, I didn't mean to say that. They are proprietors, I'm sorry. <laughs> In my conclusion, for our children, only two outcomes are possible. I want you to listen to this very carefully. A child that we do not teach, we cheat. The two words, teach and cheat, are the same exact words, the same exact alphabets. It's either you are cheating the children or you are teaching them. It's either you are cheating the children or you are teaching them. And let me tell you, we've said it, a doctor said it, Teachers paint the picture of the culture of the future. Whether somebody will be an abuser, whether there will be drug addicts in town, whether people are going to be very, 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 very angry, teachers will determine what will happen. My last point here is that teachers culture the future. And as a matter of fact, if teachers don't do that culturing well, we will live in that society. And as a teacher, I want you to think about it, that that's your 45 minutes lecture, your 10 minutes lecture, your 15 minutes lecture, your double periods are all in all 
future culture shaping exercises. In and of themselves, they are not math lectures or English lectures or geography lectures or biology lectures. The, you are actually holding the canvas to paint the future. And like, like I always tell teachers anytime I meet them, some of these people may not say thank you. Some of them may be arrogant. You may not meet them again. But to be worse, can you, can you pray to be treated by a medical doctor that you trained? Would you be happy for the lawyer who you trained English language to be the one that takes your brief or the brief of your daughter? If you want Africa to rise, education is key. And who are the people who do, it, who do the education with the teachers? As a teacher, society will not give it to you. Government will not give it to you. You have to give it to yourselves. The idea that your reward is in heaven and that it's not on the earth, we need to abolish that idea altogether. Your reward is here, and you need to become a wealthy teacher. I cannot say that enough. My last point today, and Dr. said while we're sitting, sitting down, is that people are talking, who teacher help? Who teacher help? Who teacher help? My, my thought is, who, who help teacher? <laughs> the truth is, teacher, you need help. You need to help. You need to be helped before you are able to help. For a man cannot give what he does not have. If you don't have the capacity, the finance, the internal energy to bet the next generation, that energy is too much. You have to sail on a very high wind. And don't kid yourself, you need your structure. You need to build systems and capital for yourself. When I mean capital, I mean spiritual, intellectual, and emotional capital. Not even physical cash yet. Otherwise, you cannot deliver anything. And remember, you are the lead surgeon. Here's the problem. Your product will not show until 20 years later. 2030 in Nigeria, what will happen? 2050, what will happen? When I drive on the streets of Lagos, it's going to be because you did your job or you didn't do it. When a drive driver will decide to hit my car in 2050, it may be because you didn't do your job. And that person, by the way, that is driving may be your son. And then somebody hits your son because you didn't take that person well. When somebody will go for an interview in the year 2055, and that person is your class today, you are the person that will determine whether they get the job or not. He referred to the people that trained him. I spoke to you last time about my dad and my mom. They helped me to shape the future I have today. I've done a lot of things only because of the energies of my teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, the energy you give in the classroom, I want you to know we drive the future. And whether you like it or not, you're already in the middle of it. Either by design or by destiny. Either by design or by destiny. Either by design or by destiny. You're already in the room. And since you're in the room anyway, why not do it now? I thank you for coming for this conference, and I salute every single teacher here, and I'll see you in the future. Thank you, and God bless you. I love you all. Thank you very much, sir. We're rounding off now. Quickly, we're going to have the, last, the final Q&A session. But first of all, we need to appreciate our, our final speaker for an outstanding session. Audience, please, let's be. It's getting rowdy. I know we're, we've run out of time already. We need to round off now. We're rounding off quickly with the Q&A session. We have just a few questions, just a question each now for each speaker. Just a question for each speaker. A question for each speaker, and then we, we call it a day today. A question. So quickly, we have all three speakers upstage. First of all, we have Mr. Biodun Kolawale. Can we have Mr. Biodun Kolawale upstage? A round of applause for him as he comes on stage. Dr. Oshodi, can we have you upstage, ma? Just one question each to respond to this. And then our speaker here, Mr. Adioye Abodiwe. Can we have you quickly? Just one question to answer. All right, quickly now, we have um, the first question goes to, and we have to respond in just one minute. One minute, please. We need to keep to time. We have just about seven minutes to do this. Now, this, is, this goes to Dr. Oshodi. He said, how do you, how do you help a four-year-old child who disclosed to a teacher that her elder brother abused her sexually, and after she reported the incident to her parents, her brother was severely spanked and reprimanded but that didn't stop the parents from leaving her with the brother every day because they have to go to work. School management invited, they invited them over for a discussion, and she said it was a one-off thing, and her son wouldn't do that again. 
and each day we see this child not doing well academically and always affects the private organs of the boys in our class, something like that. Okay, thank you very much for that question. It is a really difficult situation, I must say. Um, and I think as teachers, you need to also realize that the truth is you will have limits. You cannot force parents that do not allow you to help their children. In other places, like I mentioned, that kind of case will be a case that will be flagged by the social services and that child can be removed completely. And even in Nigeria, I think that if a formal complaint is made with the social um, Department of Social Services, there may be some intervention. But I admit that teacher is in a very tricky situation and um, the parents may need to be called again. And yeah, I think that that's as much as can be done there. Yeah. Uh, now, next question goes to um, uh, Mr. Adio Yabodori. He said, the ODC model, ODOCI model that you explained, how can it be expressed in government schools where it is difficult to collate and analyze data? Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes. There's nothing like, there's nothing like it is difficult to collate. I, I didn't get, because of time, I, I didn't get to one of the assignments I wanted to give us, which is, for every new academic session, the report sheets of the students that are coming into your class, you should gather them and analyze them to understand the previous course across the years. What did this person do in year one, year two, year three, before you now get to year four? What's going on about each child? Actually and ideally, every teacher should try to do some amount of what you call data gathering about their pupils a week before time starts. This is my opinion. Even in a government school, how do you know that some people are troublesome? How do you know that some children are always making noise? Some data gathering is going on. It's not just scientific enough. No matter how wieldy it is. And remember, what you become in the process of doing something is more important than the outcome itself. By the time you do that process, you know how to take someone from point A to B. You know this course, you can say in year one you are 60, year two you are 70, year three you went back to 50, year four you are now 20, and now year five you are here with me. When you go through that process and at the end of the term, the child goes to 45 or goes to 50. By the time you do these two or three academic sessions, you develop a coaching methodology that you can use for personal business. You can tell parents that, for 20,000 Naira, I'll take your children from this mark to that mark after doing for five years max. The truth is that never say never. And if, it, if there's a large crowd, take 20. Take 10. Take 15. Gather their report sheets over the years. As they're coming to your class, you analyze their results. If in some cases, joke with them and banter with them. Are they emotionally disturbed? Are their parents divorced? What's going on? By the time you do this methodology after a while, you develop a keen sense. You grow some skills that can help you to look at somebody. You look at the whole class and be like, and then there's also group statistics. You don't need to do it style. You can even say this class now, in year one, every percentile was 70%. In year two, every percentile, 80%. Now they've gone to 40% in year three. Now I'm their child in year four in the same subject. What's going on? But just attack it like whether you like, understand. What I don't like, understand. They've taught you year one, two, three. Now I'm teaching year four. Just take what I say. You won't achieve anything. We must calibrate where they are starting from by observing their performance and the movement and the changes and seek for explanations. Actually, I'm sorry, call the every math teacher in year one, two, two, three, in my opinion. Sit in a small teacher's conference and say, let's discuss this class. What's happening to the outliers? What's happening to the middle performance? What's happening to the down performance? These are the temple in down performance. Who are they? What happened over the four years? Let the mass teachers hold a mass teacher's faculty and analyze the entire performance. So that by why can you see it? So we have excellence or we know who is going to fail. And we can tell parents, this baby is not ready. Can she go back to SS1 or SS2? But just take this brief like, look, in medicine, any profession that's what is, people will do analysis. Teachers cannot just be receiving students and just be turning them out because government says so. Otherwise, you're going to be teaching both the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thank you. Thank you. Question for Mr. Biodi Kolawali now. I said, please, what do we do when the school one works with always engages one and one finds it really difficult to do other things to increase income? Yeah, you will always be busy to do what you need to do. And I will challenge you again. It's a question of capacity. 
you have a, you see, this is life. When I came up, I came in with a stair, right? You saw the stairs, am I right? Can I climb the second without climbing the first? Can I climb the third without climbing the second? So it's mastery that makes what used to be a lot. Say, it's stair one. I have another stair two to climb. And it is in pushing yourself that you realize that it's not about your school leader. It's about who? It's about who? You said it. It's about you that you see in the mirror. There is still something you can do as busy as you are. As you, you are. In fact, I have a science around me. If you need to get something done, give it to busy people. I do people never get something done. The secret to do more is to, do, is to be busy with the lady and do more. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of the Lagos Teachers Conference. Please, can we have a round of applause for our speakers? <laughs> Quickly now, we're going to have a quick photo shoot. Can we have the camera? We're going to have a quick photo shoot before we have the closing remarks by the coordinator. So can we have um, Mr. Babs Olubemi upstage, a photo shoot um, sh sh session? And we have a final video to show you, something as inspiring as the one you watched earlier, just the final charge that summarizes all you have learned today. So after the photo shoot, then we're going to have the remarks from the coordinator, and then we'll have the video. Final remark will be captured in the video. All right, can we have Chica, photographer? Standing, yeah, we'll take it standing. All right, we're waiting for the barista to join us, Barista Taiwo. All right, we have the coordinator's closing remarks now. All right, thank you. Shigo. Okay, um, wow, we've come to the end of today, or to the conference. Thank you very much uh, for sticking with us. We understand we didn't start on time because of some technical glitches. We do very much apologize for that, okay? But I want to charge you, before we watch that video, for those of you who can stick, I think it's just a few minutes, to understand that this conference is not about just hearing all this and going our usual way, okay? But this conference is about recalibration, which means that when we get back to our schools, in fact, before we even resume, we start to plan our strategy about how to effect change. That you are taking the things that you have heard here and you are determined to make a change in how you teach, in how you approach your proprietor or the owners of the school that we work in. Very important that the journey of a thousand years or a thousand miles starts with a step. So don't get challenged by the enormity of the task. Remember that just start with a step. Start with a step. Start with a shift, okay? Drip by drip, drop by drop, little by little. In music, we say poco a poco, okay? Remember that you cannot bring down a mountain just at once, except you are in some other power realms, okay? But you start chipping away little by little, and definitely we will get it done, okay? So I want to thank our speakers very much. We love you. We are glad to have you here. We thank you for, for coming and impacting us with knowledge, okay? And to everybody that has come, we want to say thank you. So this is the end of the Lagos Teachers Conference 2018. We want to say thank you, and we'll see you some other time. Okay? God bless you.
Okay, let's play the video uh, for those who can stick around. All right, please enjoy this video and take it as a final charge as you resume schools next month. Everyone wants to change the world. We talk, we watch it in movies, we sing it in songs, and we even dance. But how many can give what it takes? Greatness is not in doing great things, but great commitment to little things. A friend once said to me,